Thanks. Hello for everyone. Um, I think we'll make a start. Um, uh, for those of you eagle-eyed uh, audience members probably noticed that we don't have a full panel at the moment, so we're hoping that uh, uh, our, uh, our final panellist may uh, arrive from a ministerial meeting uh, very soon, but uh, we'll, we'll make a start anyway. Um, Thank you very much. My name is Bradley Nolan. I'm the program manager for Packways Plus, an EU funded project that's being uh, implemented through SPREP, the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, based out of Samoa. Um, what you'll be uh, hearing from, uh, from the team and I today is, uh, is about some work that we have been doing and more importantly, some very uh, impressive work that some of our member countries have been doing in the space of disaster waste management. But before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge that the, uh, the, the traditional owners of the, uh, the land that we stand on today, the Turbul people, uh, as the traditional custodians of the land, uh, I really would like to pay my respects to the elders, past, present and emerging and um, recognise the, uh, the ongoing and increasing value that the traditional owners of our land can play in building the resilience of Australia to natural, uh, natural disasters. Um, we're here today to, um, to discuss something that's vitally important, um, which is around disaster risk reduction, and more importantly, waste management. It's an area that is quite often not spoken about when we're planning for disasters and, and preparing for, uh, for how these things might happen. But as you'll hear from our speakers today, um, the integration of waste management into those discussions um, is vital for the increasing of the resilience and for um, the, the, the quick rebound following these events. Um, earlier this year, the Secretariat, uh, along with our friends from JICA, um, launched a uh, regional disaster waste management guideline to assist Pacific Island countries to manage um, the, the impacts of disaster waste. And we'll be hearing from, uh, from my colleague on that work. Um, through donor funded projects, the Secretariat is also implementing a disaster waste management um, project that's uh, aimed to assist the Pacific Island countries um, to mainstream disaster waste management through their national waste management or disaster uh, management offices. Um, we're also funding a bit of work on, um, on uh, preparing landfills for um, climate change and uh, making sure that the risk of those services and systems um, being available is, uh, is removed. This partner event really provides us an opportunity to raise awareness for policymakers and disaster management officers on how critical proper waste management is and how through the planning and preparation, waste management can improve the capacity of Pacific Island countries to prepare for emergencies, disasters, and appropriately respond when they hit. Today's event will really look to inform you of the principle and concept for disaster waste management and how effective waste management contributes to disaster preparedness and response. It will showcase the efforts of uh, Vanuatu and Tonga in mainstreaming disaster waste management into their national disaster management systems. And it will highlight some of those other initiatives that are uh, being implemented by SPREP in the Pacific Islands and hopefully be of value to, uh, to any uh, delegates today that are from uh, different regions. Um, I have uh, great uh, uh, honour to introduce our panellists today, um, Mr. Mamurua Satura, Chief Advisor for JPRISM, a JICA-funded waste management project with SPREP. Um, Mamurua-san will present on the Regional Disaster Waste Management Guideline in a moment. Um, Ms. Moana uh, Kiowa, who is unfortunately not with us as yet, but uh, a representative from the Tonga National Emergency Management Office, who will talk about some of the work they've been doing there. Ms. Rosalind um, Bu from the uh, Vanuatu Department of Environment Protection and Conservation Department will uh, present on Vanuatu's um, national initiatives. And uh, my colleague, Sanamili Bulai from Packways Plus to present on our practitioner's guide. Um, with that, I would, uh, I'd like to invite Mamura-san up to, uh, to talk to us about the disaster waste management guideline that he and his team have been uh, delivering. Thank you. Thank you, Bradley. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Satoru Mimura. Um, I'm the chief advisor of J Prism 2. Uh, it's a Japan's technical cooperation project on waste management in the Pacific in collaboration with SPREP. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Bradley and your team 
uh, for you organizing this remarkable event um, the first ever session that covers the Pacific Island in the history of APMCDRR. Um, we have been working with PREP since year 2000. And uh, in those two decades, we have experienced disaster waste treatment after cyclones, tsunamis, and volcano eruptions. Based on those experiences, uh, we realized promotion of disaster waste management fit for the region is necessary. I start with some background of the regional guideline about the uh, priorities for action on Sendai framework. Disaster waste management is essential for priority number four, preparedness, effective response, and build back better. I have been involved, involved in Tohoku recovery in Japan after tsunami for more than 10 years. And from my personal experience, may I say, without prompt proper processing of disaster waste, recovery and reconstruction cannot be achieved smoothly. And uh, small island countries are surrounded by various difficulties caused by its natures, namely smallness, dispersion, isolation. In addition, climate change and other global issues accelerate disaster risks while its coping capacity in the Pacific remains low. In line with economic development and urbanization, composition of disaster waste is changing from biodegradable ones to plastics, vehicles, and bulky ones. Spilled oil and uh, debris that contain asbestos are difficult to be managed by small island de developing states. Therefore, we published this guideline with SPREP to provide guidance on applicable and appropriate measures to Pacific Island countries. This guideline aims to improve disaster waste management capacity of the region. This guideline aligns to related regional and international strategies frameworks, guidelines, and national environment st strategies of respected countries. <laughs> we had a series of national and regional workshops to obtain their opinions, comments, and needs from stakeholders. As I said, this guideline aims to improve capacity of Pacific Island countries by showing practical measures and uh, approaches learned from previous disasters and mainstreaming disaster waste management into national disaster management plans of respective countries. In the guideline, chapters of practices, measures, and approaches are following disaster management cycle and uh, describes skills and knowledges on each stage. I will introduce you the, some of the contents of the chapters. In Sendai framework emphasizes the importance of preparedness to minimize disaster risks and damages. In terms of disaster waste, proper maintenance of landfill and effective waste collection on daily basis are essential. In other words, Capacity for daily basis operation is fundamental, even in the time of disasters. For the response stage, rapid assessment and mapping are priorities for efficient work. 
we utilize, utilize Kobo Toolbox Data Collection Tool. After the recent volcanic disaster in Tonga, we worked with Waste Authority Limited of Tonga to collect and analyze waste data using the tool. Load clearance and uh, careful hazardous waste are essential for further restoration activities and safety work. In the recovery stage, we promote reuse and recycle of collected materials in order to minimize impact to landfill site and utilize them to reconstruction of housing and livelihood of affected people and communities. So, uh, so far, uh, we have been working with four governments, namely Samoa, Tonga, Vanuatu, and the Solomon Islands to draft uh, disaster waste management plans based on the guideline. Through the process of stakeholders meeting and uh, getting policymakers endorsement on the plans, we are aiming that mainstreaming disaster waste into national, into national disaster waste management plans in, is promoted. Capacity development takes time and effort. So we are happy to work with PREP, especially PacWest Plus and uh, SWAP projects. I'm confident their approaches for capacity development on disaster waste management will be successful. We are planning collaborative training coming November. Our project J Prism, unfortunately, will conclude the current phase of the project soon, but JICA already made commitment to continue the work, including disaster waste management for another five years. Um, that's all for now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Memorasan. Um, I would like to now invite um, Ms. Breslin Bu from um, Department of Environment and Protection and Conservation in, uh, in Vanuatu to uh, talk about the work that they have been doing. Good afternoon, distinguished delegates to the conference. Um, yes, as um, Becky has mentioned, I'm Rosalind Boer from the Department of Environment in Vanuatu. Um, first of all, before I continue with my presentation, I would like to acknowledge um, the work of ASPREP through Pacquis Plus and JICA Prism Stage 2 activities in Vanuatu and other project work that have always supported us in the, in the Pacific region. Um, Yes, yeah, so um, um, Vanuatu has um, started um, preparing to um, take measures for to minimize um, disaster risks in, in the country. And um, it's hard to see from here. Yes, yeah, so we have, uh, we, we would like to thank um, Pequis Plus, who have um, supported us with training. Sorry, I'm a bit short, so I'm finding it a bit difficult to see my presentation. Yeah. Can you move this a bit? Yes, yeah, so in November of 2019, we had a disaster waste um, reduction uh, training, and uh, we, we thank the funders who supported the training. Um, all right. Yeah. So we acknowledge, sorry about this, we acknowledge the Canadian government for funding the training through the joint coordination of SPREP, JICA J Prism 2 project and the University of Newcastle. Um, um, follow up from the workshop, follow up workshop from the training was the main goal to develop Vanuatu's National Disaster Waste Management Contingency Plan. Again, as I've already um, expressed, we, we truly appreciate SPREP and J Prism to team experts for their commitment to undertake this task jointly with the government of Vanuatu. 
The workshop provided an overview of relevant stakeholder roles in terms of disaster waste management during a disaster. And disaster waste contingency plans are to be finalized by November 2022, um, this year. Uh, we were going to do that in um, 2020, unfortunately, due to the COVID situation, and also to um, delays to be part of our national, to be a cluster in the national development, uh, national management um, disaster organization in Vanuatu, we were not able to um, finalize these plans. When we had, we had a uh, disaster in 2000 and, um, 19, which was uh, the second uh, Harold, um, second Harold, uh, tropical second Harold, which affected Vanuatu, and it was mostly toward the north of Vanuatu. Um, there were islands there that were uh, very much affected with the cyclone. So we conducted a rapid assessment on the Sanma province, which is uh, which composes the islands that were affected. And there was a Santo Island, which is the second biggest island, uh, the biggest island of Vanuatu. Uh, we have Valo Island, uh, Aure, and Pentecost Island. Those are islands to the north of, um, to north of Vanuatu. And in our rapid assessment, the majority of the waste we identified was green waste and building debris, including bulky wastes such as iron roofing, timber, etc. Um, we then um, did some uh, recovery work to to um, minimize the waste that were um, that, that were that were that were uh, affecting the places there. So we have you can see from this slide the total of um, this is the waste that was removed from the island, so collected and and removed. Um, a total of um, so yes, yeah, so we have uh, in the main island of Santo. You have we have the re, we we did recyclables and uh, bulky waste and non recyclables, and those are the total uh, amount of waste that were collected at the time. We also had uh, the recovery activities on the other islands like Pentecost. There were different uh, locations on the island of Pentecost. And um, there were not so many um, ways to recover there. I think a lot of it was, um, yeah, most of it were about the same. We didn't have a lot of bulky waste because these are little uh, small islands. And so uh, most of the um, infrastructure there would be local, locally made kind of houses and all that. So our total um, amount of um, disaster that was collected in both in all these islands added up to about 238 um, meter cube of disaster waste that was uh, recovered from the islands. Uh, we of course face challenges. Um, I think the tropical cyclone uh, Harold disaster was the first time that the department uh, engaged in uh, being part of the national management disaster organization activities. And um, these are the challenges that we faced. Um, funding, of course, we all know is always a constraint to um, um, disasters. So we, uh, there was uh, access to the main disaster funding from the disaster management office was an issue and therefore other internal funding was directed so that we could fund the disaster waste assessment activities. Um, there was delay in response, disaster waste assessment team comprising of the department and uh, municipal at the, at the capital. We took, uh, we undertook assessments at least uh, like about three weeks after Tropical Cyclone Harold came through Vanuatu. Um, there was also delay in submission of assessment forms. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, the rapid assessment uh, was conducted on phone. We had to use phone and um, there was no people, PPE equipment. Uh, wood chippers, chainsaws, miner, oil spill kits, tool kits, etc. Uh, we did try to identify a temporary dump site to be secured for the disaster waste, but yeah, due to um, financial constraints, we were not able to have that in place. Um, 
we need to strengthen our collaborations between the relevant uh, departments and our national department office when, when we encounter disasters like this. Um, there were issues on assessment um, forms, like technical issues, such as uh, some of the things were, some of the questions were revised and, and the team didn't, did not have access to that. Um, the technical capacity and guidance to auto check assessment uh, was also an issue. And of course, uh, we didn't have enough baseline data to refer to. Yes, and again, we were, we were slow or delayed in submission of our assessment forms. Okay, so um, when, we, when the recovery was being undertaken, the main challenges that was faced by the team was that you know, the islands are far from the main island where we only have um, one recycler who can collect um, any recyclable waste. So it was not easy to engage. It also was not easy to engage people to do cleanups and recovery activities as most people were you know, busy rebuilding and their homes and gardens. So to take the waste from the island to the main center was a bit of a challenge because it's not easy and it was costly even to find the boats to, to take the waste to the main, main island. So um, at the government level, um, we did produce a report that was submitted to our prime minister's office and it covered both disaster waste and biodiversity recommendations for post assessments. Um, at the time, um, there was a dengue outbreak during the time disaster, the cy tropical cyclone disaster. Too much rain, I guess, uh, caused an outbreak in, um, in dengue fever. Uh, however, uh, we were able to work with our, our other stakeholders, such as the Ministry of Health, the Luganville Council, and we managed to do a massive cleanup to minimize the, minimize the outbreak at that time. Um, we again continue to acknowledge um, JICA. We sent a formal request for assistance and um, JICA was able to donate to us disaster waste response equipment such as chainsaws, safety boots, protective gear, goggles, Samsung tablets. These are the, some of the equipment that we will use in terms of uh, if there is any future disaster that happens again. Our expectations, um, regional and international, we um, hope to have continuous dia dialogue with regional and international organizations, including SPREP, for technical and financial support. And of course, we um, need to continue to coordinate and be supported by in-country representatives in line with actual country needs post-disaster. So um, the National Coordination for Disaster Waste Management for one or two, um, post Tropical Cyclone Harold, the government through the Department of Environment Protection and Conservation under the Ministry of Climate Change and Adaptation, we recognize the need to establish a disaster waste cluster against uh, under the national disaster framework. So in 2021, an environment cluster was established under the national disaster framework. And there are two subclusters under this cluster. We have the disaster waste subcluster and we also have the lost subcluster. Um, the disaster waste subcluster has a structure that uh, links all key sectors, including the government, sub-government, and NGO stakeholders. Okay, so this is our structure. The environment cluster, which is uh, part of the disaster waste management response structure in Vanuatu. Um, we have a cluster lead, which is the director of the Department of Environment. Um, for logistics <coughs> operations, we have our head of the um, Environmental Protection Division, which is under the Department of Environment. And we also have the NDMO operations manager. 
And um, we have the NDMO offices. If you look at the first line, the third line of um, offices there, these are from representatives in the different provinces. Vanuatu has six provinces and we have NDMO offices uh, represented in those different provinces. So under, in, under the NDMO, we, we have our, our other stakeholders like the Port Vila City Council, and uh, which is based in Sheffield province. And uh, we have uh, Luganville Municipal, which is uh, part of the Sanma Pro environment, um, the Sanma province. Um, yes, yeah, so Sanma Environment Extension Officer, Luganville Municipal Waste Management Officer, and Sanma, Sanma province planner. Then we have our Tafia province, which also has similar offices. And that's the same for our Malampa, Panama, and Torba provinces. Under them, we have our waste sector partners. And as you can see, most of them are the same. Then we have JICA, Prep, One Small Bag, World Vision, and others. They support us um, if we are to do any work concerning uh, the system waste management when we have it in, 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 in country. Yes, I think that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. The, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, work that Vanuatu did following TC Harold was really instrumental in um, pushing forward the structural um, information that uh, Rosalind was just talking to there. So we look forward to continue working with the department to strengthen that process and to see if we can replicate it. Unfortunately, we, uh, we haven't been able to locate our uh, speaker from Tonga as yet. We, we will uh, continue hoping that um, Moana can join us before the end of the session. But with, uh, with that in mind, I would like to invite my friend and colleague, Sanameli Bulai from Packways Plus up to talk about the work that we have been doing and uh, the support provided to our, uh, our member countries through our Disaster Waste Management Regional Project. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Bradley. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am Sadie Melimbulai, and my um, the scope of my presentation today is on additional work um, undertaken by the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program to ensure that uh, we assist Pacific Island countries improve uh, disaster waste management. Um, and our concern with um, disaster waste management is uh, directly linked to the fact that uh, most of or <coughs> Not all of our member countries are, um, are large ocean states. We have limited land area and um, waste, waste generated from a disaster usually plays a um, great pressure on our waste management infrastructures. So uh, PECWIS Plus, we are a EU funded program um, tasked with assisting uh, 14 Pacific countries in Timor Leste to improve waste management. Our key focus is on eight waste streams uh, asbestos management, healthcare, e waste, organic, recyclable, bulky, disaster waste, and uh, some component of wastewater. When it comes to disaster waste, our main objective is assisting Pacific Island countries mainstream disaster waste management and the work identified under the regional guideline of, on uh, disaster waste management into the framework for the FRDP, which is um, currently being implemented by member countries. We have, um, we deliver our interventions in four key result areas, uh, ranging from uh, data, research, education, um, policies and regulatory frameworks, best practices, and even um, assistance on human capacity enhancement. Um, under this 4KRA, we have designed a regional project on disaster waste. And what we are doing is, um, if, as, as you have heard from Imura-san earlier, they have worked with um, Samoa, Tonga, Vanuatu, and uh, Solomon Islands, they're working with Solomon Islands to have these countries draft national disaster waste management plans and also undertake trainings. So our regional project was designed to provide guidelines and, and uh, instruction um, to other Pacific Island countries who on how to implement these or draft these plans and implement it. 
We are fortunate in the room with us um, that we have uh, the University of Newcastle who we engaged um, to um, establish uh, draft practitioners guidelines that uh, uh, for disaster waste. Um, we, the, the main guidelines that we're looking at um, the National Disaster Waste Management uh, Plan or Management Guideline. So these are plans that Ident that is um, specifically drafted to a country that um, identifies key stakeholders um, and the responsibilities for waste management to be undertaken by these identified stakeholders under each stage of the disaster management cycle. So preparedness, um, um, following a disaster, what is to be immediately um, done uh, under the, the different stages at yeah, post-disaster. Um, also, the National Disaster Waste Management Guideline that we're working with the University of Newcastle um, in, in finalizing also identifies um, the level of coordination, not only amongst government departments, but communities and, and private sectors. Um, our, our Pacific Island countries, uh, some of them are archipelagic states, whereby you have you, the they have islands that are spread over vast ocean bodies. So the, we are not only limiting our assistance uh, to these countries to draft national plans, but also community management plans, whereby we're empowering communities of outer islands <coughs> on to take that first step following a cyclone or just before a cyclone while they await interventions from the national authorities. Um, with Tonga following TC Harrow, uh, for all the communities, sorry, with Vanuatu following TC Harrow's, all the communities that we work with, uh, we had um, drafted community plans, uh, community disaster waste management plans, whereby we identified all the key waste management activities to be undertaken from a normal day outside um, disaster, um, disaster season to um, when a warning is passed by the national authority and straight after uh, a disaster. Uh, we had also uh, done training with these communities. Um, this is just to ensure that um, disaster, um, waste generated from a natural hazard, uh, from a natural disaster is um, stored safely by local communities and they understand the impact of this waste before um, the uh, assistance of national authorities can get to them. Um, in addition to the waste management plan guideline and drafting instructions, uh, our regional project will also be establishing a disaster waste estimation uh, methodology um, that can be part of the PDNA and uh, can also help inform uh, this national decision making on, on building back after a disaster. Um, we, you've heard from uh, Vanuatu on how they had established clusters uh, to assist not only with disaster waste management, but also environment management. Um, and uh, with our um, engagement and agreement with the University of Newcastle, they are also um, work, you know, will be producing um, this, um, this assistance whereby we will provide guidance to um, countries, specific countries on how to establish these clusters, um, the membership for these clusters and the task um, what is to be the, the role of this task, um, of, of these um, uh, clusters in assisting um, uh, National Disaster Management Office to mainstream disaster waste um, management into the National Disaster Management Framework. And um, in addition to all that, all the practitioners guideline and, and um, the instruction manuals that we will produce, we will also uh, be producing um, videos that can guide Pacific Island countries undertake this um, process. Um, so we, we are coming um, to the end of those that drafting stages and um, following that we will work, we will pilot all our guidelines with a Pacific um, Island country that is not uh, covered by other spread projects. Um, to uh, trial these guidelines and then finalize them at the end of that engagement with a pilot country. Thank you. I think that's.
the end of my presentation. Thank you, Sonny Millie. Um, as I've said a couple of times, we were hoping to, uh, to be able to explore some of the activities that Tonga had been doing uh, with disaster waste management, but unfortunately they have uh, continued to be held up. That being said, we now have an amazing opportunity, a lot more time to, uh, to be talking and exploring uh, not only our work, but work that has been happening in region. And um, we are set up at the front here for a panel Q&A. There are two microphones uh, down the middle and uh, we would welcome um, some interactivity now from the floor. Before doing so though, um, Sonia Milley did mention that we have been working with the University of Newcastle and uh, very impromptu, I was wondering, Dr. Ifti Ahmed, would, would you mind joining the panel for some of the work that you have been doing? There might be some questions from the floor that you could assist with. Thank you very much. Um, uh, for everyone in the room, um, Dr. Ifti Ahmed is, uh, is with the University of Newcastle, has been helping um, with a lot of the activities that have been happening over the last few years. And I believe uh, we'll be uh, hosting another partner event at four o'clock this afternoon as well. So if you like what you hear, this is a precursor to, uh, to much more time later on. Thank you for joining us so late in the piece. Um, might I invite anyone from the floor, if you have a question, please come up to one of the center microphones and, uh, and I'm sure the panel would uh, love to interact. Please. I'm Caitlin from Susie Foundation. That was really insightful and I really enjoyed the presentation. So um, I have a question for Ms. Sarnilu. Sorry if I still pronounce it. That's fine. Um, so I thought the video that you mentioned um, to guide local practitioner that was really creative. And I was wondering what was the video about if you could elaborate on that. You wanna so I should just ask the video. The videos, yeah. well, as, as my uh, colleague uh, Sani Meli was saying, is that those the other three main, main elements. One is the template, mm -hmm. the other is the guidelines for estimation, and the other one is to set up the environment sector working group or subcluster, as she called it. Now, each of those documents needs some kind of guidance, mm -hmm. and those videos, there'll be three videos which will actually guide on how to use these three different modules or elements. And while I'm talking, actually, I'd like to introduce some of my teammates who work on this project. They're also sitting in the front. Uh, Mr. Thomas Johnson, uh, Ms. Kylie Ledger, and Dr. Maggie Tang. And uh, Thomas Johnson was also uh, in the first uh, training as a resource person, which uh, uh, Ms. Rosalyn mentioned in Vanuatu in 2019. So yeah. but. Yeah, those are the videos. They are not like um, colorful videos. They're just like very straightforward instructions. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just useful for people to just listen to those videos before yeah. they actually go and start reading. I thought that was a good idea because it will be more interactive to um, compare to the document. Um, and another question I have for um, Ms. Billy um, is, it's more like an idea because I thought um, I was just wondering what ways do you have, because you mentioned a lot of challenges. I was wondering if you have any ways to um, address the challenges. So we, we have some challenges, but um, I, I believe that with more collaboration between us and our National Department, uh, National Disaster Management Office, I'm sure, because we just started, as I said, this is the first time that we participated to um, focusing on waste uh, collection, recovery of the waste. So I believe that um, with more collaboration and understanding between our National Department, National Disaster Management Office, uh, we, we should be able to at least progress more better on these challenges. Yeah. And I just have an idea when you mentioned um, the challenges that you have um, to recruit volunteers to clean up their community. Yeah. Um, so when they have to clean up their homes and they are unable to join um, the community cleanup force. Um, so our organization had um, 
a program. It's called Cash for Work Cleanup Program. So we'll be um, recruiting um, the the people in the community that was suffering from the disaster. So we will pay them and they will help clean up. So they can be from a state of victim to a state of someone who can also contribute um, to the community. And this will also provide them financial income. So I thought it was a really good idea. And I just like to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whilst we're waiting for another brave soul to come and talk to the panel, um, I, I might just ask uh, Rosalind and Sonia Milley, um, both of your presentations spoke about a multi-level approach to disaster waste management. On one hand, we were working with communities and developing community plans and empowering <laughs> communities to um, to prepare and to respond quickly. And on the other hand, we're talking about the national plans and structures to ensure that the, the infrastructural systems are in place. Can we maybe explore a little bit about how those two schemes work in concert and what's more important at which stage of disaster preparedness and response? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So I think the keywords to um, identifying the scope of the two plans is the geographical structure of a country. Um, for instance, uh, for Vanuatu, um, initially in 2019, um, through the assistance of JPRISM, uh, worked with the national government in the drafting of a national disaster management plan and also training on um, safe handling uh, of disaster waste and also estimation. But when TC Harrell um, struck the country um, a few months later, it hit um, the areas of the outer province, uh, which was not part of the training um, that was facilitated in, in Port Vila. So, um, and when uh, when a cyclone do hit a country, the people that you train or the national authority that was trained uh, in the capital CD or in the main CBD um, also hit or are also affected and may have um, and may need time to deploy teams to touch outer provinces or the outer islands. So the community plans is actually for communities in for all the communities in, in the outer regions of a country. And it is um, guidance to local communities on how to safely store waste and what actions are to be undertaken when a one has natural hazard warning has been issued. This is just to ensure that the, the ongoing impact from improper waste uh, management uh, does not affect the local communities and um, they're able to safely store while awaiting um, the assistance from the national government or the national authority. So it's, it's more um, ensuring um, um, safety for local communities while um, government gather resources and assistance um, to be deployed to all the communities. Yes, yes, and as I have, as I have already, already mentioned, that this was the first time that we have started a work focusing on waste in Vanuatu um, for, for us to reach out and you know, help our communities to be prepared. We need to conduct a lot more trainings, etc., to help them to know, you know how to prepare themselves in case of disasters like this. So um, I hope and believe that we'll continue to do that for, for our communities. Um, there was a lady down the back, looks very insightful. Please join us at the microphone in the middle. Uh, and then, yeah, if uh, you can be second and third. Hello, Lele. Um, My name is Sari Rola here. I'm Tongan, uh, but I'm working in Fiji. Uh, for the Pacific Islands Association of Non-Governmental Organization, a regional CSO platform for national uh, big umbrella NGOs in our 24 countries and territories in the Pacific. Thank you for all the presentations because this is something that is uh, 
um, imaging in the humanitarian uh, work, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, waste management being identified, uh, but still very much in silo out of the humanitarian work. Um, with, with the localization agenda, I think it's, uh, it's important that we look at it, uh, that, the, that the management of waste is part and parcel of how we bring community and civil society in, in, the, in the process, in the governance of it, uh, in the management of that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, if, if I could use an example for Tonga in the tsunami, a lot of the work that has been done is really mainly in the main islands uh, of, of Tonga Tapu. Uh, and they do have a, a waste uh, management system uh, to some extent, a landfill uh, rubbish dump. It's uh, the four communities that are in the outer islands that was affected, that has been uh, relocated, um, absent, in the outer islands, absent of any waste management. Uh, landfill or any, you know, is, is, is absent. So we are talking about waste in the form of um, the, the constructions of the houses being damaged by the tsunami. Uh, but at the same time, it's also speak to the capacity of the local, where majority of our community in the islands, our young people are now in the uh, picking fruits here in Australia and New Zealand. So the main power that are usually responding to humanitarians uh, has, has shifted. And so from a, um, the rest of the community, uh, you see women taking up that role. Yeah, it has shifted the role in terms of responding and, and stepping up to uh, deal with waste management. It's now become women's uh, role and responsibility. Uh, but also in our, in our rural communities, our, our elderly are mainly the ones that are there because our, our kids and our, our youth are moving to the main islands for education. So how do you make a plan that can incorporate that, the, the reality of our community, of our rural community, in how they manage the, the waste? I had not seen any mention of how do you transport uh, rubbish uh, and debris from this uh, community? Uh, to to maybe the main islands, and how do you, you do you need to ship that out? How do you do recycling? Those are the questions that I thought that I just bring to the table and part of the conversation, if how we can make those plans work. Minaka sir, thank you very much, <clears throat> and I think I will continue to be surprised at how much COVID and the impacts of the pandemic are impacting on societies, and I confess. Uh, it, uh, the, the, the gender roles and the societal structures that are impacted by the workforce moving out um, at the same time as an event like this is, is one that I can see as uh, very real. Um, so to Millie, Rosalind, I guess that question around how do those plans actually get structured um, is a, a really important one. And, and we probably, uh, I guess, grazed over how those plans were actually developed. This wasn't a, a plan structure that was written for a community. Um, could I ask both of you to respond to the room and, and just uh, uh, explain how that was done and, and how, given how that community um, is changing, uh, there is a, a need and a, a process that can see those plans reviewed and revised? Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. Um, thank you. Um, yes, we, we, we recognize the role of um, women, um, also elderly, in uh, traditional knowledge in, in waste management. For the community waste management plans, um, the activities that is drafted into the plan or the for each stage of the disaster waste uh, cycle, it was actually done so in consultations uh, with with the local communities. Um, some the way we did the one uh, for 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 Vanuatu was that we we created um, there was a there was a community whereby women were not um, prepared to voice out um, the issues or the challenges or the activities they think should be done um, in in a 
communal setting or in a, in a group discussion. So what we did um, in September of 2022 was um, created a learning and consultation specifically for the women only. And we did so at a time that the women were not engaged in, in, um, in domestic activities or in their own um, um, daily uh, work. So um, even though we had a community consultations, we had scheduled a, a, a different a specific one for women. But the activities um, that go into a community uh, disaster waste management plan um, is identified by the communities um, or something that is doable. Um, and um, part of that plan as well, uh, we, we, the part of the question, the question that was raised was how do you get it um, to the, the waste management infrastructure, which is usually centered or constructed um, in the main island. Uh, for Vanuatu, um, we had moved recyclables from these outer communities um, into either Logan to Santo and Luganville for disposal and uh, for recycling by the recycling, local recycling company. So that's that's the gist or, or the objective of having that plan is, is forming partnership with the private sector, identifying who can collect what, um, identifying activities for each waste stream that is anticipated to be um, generated from a natural disaster and, and teaching uh, not only the, those identified stakeholders and local authorities, but also communities on um, separately storing them, safe handling, um, especially with uh, um, hazardous material. Um, what we had found in past disasters, asbestos is one of the main one, um, uh, ACM building materials is one of the concern. So that the, the, that's why we're proposing the plan is to identify those key measures that safeguard um, not only the local authorities or the first respondents, but also uh, communities um, that are far away from, from um, the urban centers. And I should say the way that the plans were developed with the community, it's, we, we call them community plans, not just because they're for how the community can or should um, manage these things, but actually written by the community. So the process at that point was those plans were then delivered to the department. Um, and that started a conversation between the department and the communities about the roles of different organizations and timing of how and when. Um, Rosalind, I'm wondering if, uh, if you might then be able to quickly talk about the, the process that the department has done since receiving those plans and, and the ability that has given you to, uh, to start conversations and, um, and build those roles and responsibilities with the community. <coughs> Okay, so for Vanuatu, um, I think since we started, you know, we were we were trained, we had the training, and we started um, being um, part of the disaster waste operations during a disaster. Um, I uh, we we did visit our communities, and uh, the structure we have for Vanuatu now is like we we haven't really uh, utilized every every part of the structure to help our communities as yet, but we have, uh, we have through our local authority, we have um, the um, local administrators in the communities and the local um, councillors. So um, we, we, we try our best to use this, um, use this piece to reach out to our communities and have in place um, um, members of the community who can lead, you know, during a disaster when it happens. So uh, we still have to really utilize uh, what system we, we have, have, have in place. Thank you. Now we do have two minutes before we have a very hard finish for this event, which I've been told. Um, sir, up the back, you did have a question. Would you like to attempt asking that before we, uh, before we get kicked out of the room? And I was very interested how they respond to that with uh, it's like a recent Brisbane flood where they basically had to write up almost 50 million dollars because trucks got submerged and landfills got filled up and stuff like that. But I was very interested in your sort of slide was about the changing nature of waste, particularly waste. 
And we're finding in Australia, we're running out of land. It was like the building construction waste. Brisbane is going to run out, I think, in six months' time. So if you're demolishing a building in Brisbane, there's nowhere to put that industrial waste. Mm -hmm. And if you've got different types of waste coming into the land, how do you manage that? So I presume in a lot of these island communities, you only have one general landfill. You don't sit there. And how do you do recycling the bee waste? And what do you do about asbestos? And what do you do in the smaller islands? And how do you transport that waste back to the main mm -hmm. islands? So I hear all the problems about how you manage it now. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about bee waste and things like that? And just yeah. quickly, clean way looked at harvesting mm -hmm. gases from landfills to produce electricity. I'm just wondering whether you guys have thought of something like that. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's a very good comment and a query there. Uh, for, for I think most of the Pacific Island countries, this is a very big challenge. We really don't have infrastructures, you know, really in place to really collect all our recyclables and and other ways, you know. So, um, but um, a few of a few of the Pacific Island countries have started. Um, um, advanced recovery um, fixed deposit systems, um, produ um, produce uh, responsibility, eh? pollution, polluter pay. So, um, through, through the help of um, SPREP, PECMIS Plus, and uh, the other uh, project um, counterparts there, they're supporting us to have such system in place. So, it will be kind of a new thing for most of the Pacific Island countries, but for one or two, we, we do have a regulation now in place. And we are hoping that if we finalize it, it should support us with some infrastructure and, you know, having some more better management of our dump sites and landfills. It could, it can be a starting point there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think that's a perfect point for us to uh, to stop and maybe leave that sit with the donors and development partners that are in the room, that uh, there is room to uh, to improve uh, and provide assistance through to, to member island states. Um, I know that there was another question. Unfortunately, we are at one o'clock, which is the, uh, the, the time at which I think they turn the lights out. So uh, apologies for that. Um, I very much do uh, welcome all of you to uh, to visit the um, the JPRISM2 website and the PacWaste Plus website. You can find that through SPREP or through PacWastePlus.org. Um, all of the work that we are doing with our member countries is freely available on those sites. We welcome um, any interventions or activities with uh, with anyone in this space. We're, we're very much moving forward on the uh, the creation of these subclusters and working with uh, with various government departments to deliver those. Um, there is also a, a new uh, green forum that has been set up at thegreenforum.org, um, which is a meeting space online that is uh, is bringing together groups from Africa, Caribbean, the Pacific, and Europe to uh, and and Asia to talk about and share knowledge and experience across uh, a number of issues, including the product stewardship schemes that Rosalind was just talking about, as well as disaster waste, e-waste, um, hazardous waste management, and all of those other things. So. Please do engage with uh, with all of us. I think only through sharing of knowledge and building of people's capacities can we have a shared solution to these issues. I thank you all very much for coming along to today, the start of the conference, and uh, and very much look forward to uh, seeing you all uh, as we go. But if I could ask you all to thank our panelists today, thank you. Thank you very much.